Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.20 and Eagle Dynamics A10C2 Tank Killer Module. Welcome to Tutorial 12, APKWS. Uh, the APKWS, or the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, is a special kit that can be added to Hydro Rockets to make them laser guided. Uh, it's kind of a, a fancy little system. It comes in two variants. You have the M151L rocket, which is high explosive. That's what we have loaded here today. And you also have available the M282L, which is the uh, penetrator warhead version. Uh, and this is designed for use against armor. Today we're actually attacking some lightly armored vehicles and we're just using the high explosive, uh, which will actually work for this purpose. So let's uh, jump into the Dismiss first and have a little peek. Uh, we can see here that we have uh, TERs, triple ejector racks, on pylons four, sorry, three, four, eight, and nine. That's the maximum number of triple ejectors you can carry. You can also carry these pods singly on stations two and ten. So just be aware of that. Uh, but today we're carrying these here. If you want to be able to program the laser code that they're going to use, because you can see that they cycle through APKWS and then the current code, which is 1688 by default, you can go into Inventory and you can choose one of the stations. We're just going to choose Station 8 just now. We can choose Inventory Stat and from here we can change the laser code. Um, you can actually change some other settings here, but this is more about the, the load. So here's the laser code. Actually today I'm going to use 1655. I'm typing that into the scratch pad here and I can click laser code and it updates the laser code. We could then click load to just update this particular station or we could click load symmetrical and it would do both sides. So I'm going to say load symmetrical and we can see here that it's done uh, four and eight. I'll now do the same for the other two. So inventory stat 1655 laser code load symmetric and you can now see that all of them show 1655. We'll go back to stat. Okay, if I go ahead and um, if I've currently got the HUD as the uh, sensor of interest, I can go right on the data management switch and select the M151L profile. Uh, you see it highlights all the pylons. I could now go into profile and choose view profile and uh, change settings. The only settings we have here are for up, down, right, left, and minimum altitude. So we're not actually going to change that there. If I go return, the only other setting I can change is the uh, the mode that we're going to launch in. We can do singles, pairs, ripple singles, and ripple pairs. Um, yeah, for certain targets you might launch pairs or you might launch ripples of these rockets. Uh, of course, unless you do a bit of spacing, you're only going to hit a single target with these. So that's worth keeping in mind. I'm just going to demonstrate launching them singly. That's what I prefer to do. Even if I'm going to double tap, I prefer to hit the pickle button twice. So we have the weapon selected and that's all working nicely now. And uh, you can see up here, let me get the view moved a little bit, confirmed on the HUD, we have manual release M151L, um, we're currently in altitude hold, and uh, weapon system is armed. So that's all confirmed up there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, data management switch forward once to get waypoint one. That is the location of my targets. I'm now going to get up the uh, targeting pod. Of course, if you want to employ these guided, there has to be a laser spot, and that can either come from your own aircraft or from a buddy laser or some other kind of offboard targeting. Today, we're going to provide the laser spot ourselves. So, air to ground master mode on the pod. I'm going to go coolie hat right long. I now have this as my sensor of interest. I'm going to go china hat forward long and that will point me at my current speed, and then China Hat forward short to get the FOV in. I'm gonna move my crosshairs over my target and use data management switch forward to zoom. And you can see we have these lightly armored targets. Uh, target management switch forward short to get a point track, and then target management switch forward long to make that my sensor of interest. Yeah, I'm going to active pause just now before we kind of move off target. Uh, we're turning to the right of target, you see. And uh, I'm going to go control page. And you notice that I changed the laser code on the rockets. I now need to make sure that my laser 
uh, emitter is on the same code. So 1655 in the scratch pad, and I can click in here for the laser code. L is for the laser code, LSS is for the laser spot search. Uh, and the other setting for the laser is either latch off or latch on. If my latch is off, I'll have to press and hold nose wheel steering to emit the laser. With latch on, I just tap it once to turn on and tap it again to turn it off. I can now return. So at this point, we're basically completely set up. Um, let's come around for the attack and then I'll pause when we get symbology up on the HUD. Warning, autopilot. So I just yanked on the stick there to get the autopilot off. Uh, let's follow the line on our flight path marker to get us towards the current sensor point of interest. There we go. That's what we want to attack. And let's just pause it here momentarily. This is the standard rocket's uh, symbology. So this actually is not specific to the APKWS. You will see this for all types of rocket attack. Uh, you have your standard rocket reticle and the range will count down around the outside. Now for us, we don't actually care about this because uh, that would only be the case if we're firing these rockets unguided, which you can be a bit of a waste, uh, wasting APKWS kits, but you could. Uh, but today we're going to fire uh, these guided. So actually, we don't really care about any of this symbology, but um, yeah, if you were going to launch them manually, you could you could reference this reticle. Uh, this down here is the gun cross, because you can fire the gun at the same time as launching rockets. All we really want to do is we want to get within about six nautical miles and fire the laser, and then maximum range, depending on your altitude and parameters, is between 5 and 5.5 nautical miles. So let's go ahead and get ourselves into parameters. I can already tap nose wheel steering to fire the laser. You see the flashing L here and the flashing L here. We're within the launch parameters. I'm going to double tap pickle, and I'm going to come off target and enter a gentle turn. Now, of course, until impact, we must maintain the pod on the target and the laser firing. So let's hit F6. We can see rockets are coming down. This is well within maximum range, so it'll make this hit very, very easily. In comes my double tap. Bang, bang. That vehicle is destroyed. Perfect. I can now tap nose wheel steering again. The laser is now off. So uh, let's come off of that destroyed target. These guys are all now moving around. And uh, let's see if I could do that again, but this time let's try hitting two different targets at the same time. So you could do this with a bit of a pause in between shots. Uh, so I'm going to get myself back out towards uh, kind of a, a decent range. I'll, I'll fly outbound to about seven nautical miles and then I'll come around and re-attack. This time I'm going to fire my first set of rockets. I'm going to wait a good bit of time to allow the first set to get airborne. I'm then going to fire another set of rockets, wait until the first set impacts, and then I'll move, I'll slew the targeting pod over the next target. And, you know, all being well, we should manage to kill two targets. If you're very good at this, you could probably get three or more separate targets. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try and be a little bit conservative here and just go for two sets, show you how this could work. We're on six miles now. Let's go ahead and come around. Let's get ourselves on target. Okay, so get ourselves back on an area track, uh, on a point track here. There is the target area. Wait for six miles. There we go, firing the laser. In just a moment, I'll get myself set up and I'll let loose the first couple. Okay, five miles, nose down, and one, two away, nose back up. We want to maintain our altitude. Going to give it a, a good bit of time. I'll, I'll actually, I'll wait until we get to just under four miles. Okay, nose down, one, two away again, and then back up. And I'm going to wait for the impact on this guy, and I'm going to slew over the next one. Impact, slewing, we're on the next one. Let's see if that actually worked. <laughs> it did, it did, there you go. So there was a demonstration of two targets on a single pass. If you're very good at this, I would imagine you could probably manage three, maybe even more. Uh, let me know in the comments what you've managed to do. So uh, this is almost the maximum possible loadout here. You see that uh, I have 
a huge number of these. I've got uh, four pylons with triple uh, triple racks of these pods. I could carry two more pods singly if I really, really wanted to. And um, in it's uh, it's three pods. Each one of them is it eight that you're getting in each one, or is it seven? I forget now actually how many you have in each pod. Total of twenty one anyway with the. Uh, with the triple setup, so that's that's what you can achieve there. So, in any case, that is a demonstration of the APKWS in the A10C2. I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you next time.